Welcome everyone to this short video tutorial. We are going to continue on with using conditionals and loops in, and use them to make a basic text-based game um, like Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So for our game, we're going to develop the short algorithm first. So we'll say that there has to be an introduction. And then the person's going to need to um, choose a cave. where a monster lives in one of the caves. Then we'll have to check to see which cave the monster lives in. And if the cave the monster lives in matches with the cave you chose, then you'll die. And if the caves don't match, then you have found the cave with the treasure or safe passage. And then we want to know um, if you do lose, do you want to play again? And if you win, you have to add to your points. And then we will also need a main method to run the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to create a main method here. So we'll say, well, let's do it uh, step by step first. And then we're going to create some functions so that we can call these um, in different orders throughout the game. All right, so let's tackle the introduction first. So we'll say print, you are in a land of dragons. You could name your land any land that you want. And of course, we want um, this information to print out slowly so the reader can use it. So we'll import the time library. And then we can add uh, time.sleep. And then we'll print in front of you, you see two caves. So now we've given our adventurer a choice. And we need to put in two seconds as parameters for these. So that the statements print out slowly enough for our f adventurer to read them. So you say print in one cave lives a dragon that is friendly and in the other cave a dragon that will eat you on sight. All 
All right. So then what we want to do is we want the to allow the user to choose a cave. So we'll need to set up a variable to hold the number that the user enters, cave 1 or cave 2. So we'll just say cave is equal to, and we'll turn it into um, a blank string. And then what we want to say is while the cave is not, e is not equal to a 1, and cave is not equal to to a two. Then um, you need to enter the number of the cave because you haven't chosen yet. So, and we want to make these guys strings. So we'll say quotes one and quotes and quotes two in quotes. Okay. And then we'll give the user a prompt. So we'll say cave is equal to raw input and we'll say which cave will you go into. And bracket, we'll just say enter a one or a two. And then colon. Close the quotes and close the parentheses. And then we find want to find out eventually which number they went to. So we'll have to return the cave number. Well, actually, um, we won't need to do this until we do our functions. But we can go ahead and print out the cave number to make sure that it is what we chose. So let's go ahead and run this part. And I'm going to go ahead and save it to my folder. some quotes at the end here. Remember that after a print statement you need quotes at the beginning of your sentence and at the end of your sentence and we need some dots there because we're going to continue our sentence and we don't need two there's so we'll say take that one out. Okay so now to run it again You're in a land of dragons. In front of you, you see two caves. In one cave lives a dragon that is friendly, and in the other cave, there is a dragon that will eat you on sight. Which cave do you want to go into? I'm going to say two, and we get the right value in, stored in cave. All right, so let's go on to the next section. So I'm going to comment out this print statement because we don't need it right now. And now we need to check which cave the monster lives in. So we want to have the monster not live in any one particular cave. Um, and so we want to add the random library. So we'll import random. And now we'll generate a random number to see which cave um, the user is in. I'm sorry, the dragon is in. So we're going to say, um, we'll say we can either choose, let's choose the friendly dragon cave. So we'll say friendly dragon, and we'll name it friendly cave, and we'll set equal to random dot rand int, and we want a one or a two. And then we want to make sure that we are getting the numbers that we want, so let's go ahead and add a print statement. And we'll go ahead and print out friendly cave right now. So we'll say run module.
I want to enter a 1. And cave is not printing out 1, it's printing out 2. Oh, that's because we generated a 1. Notice here I, for, I had commented out print cave, so that's not being generated. So that's why it didn't match. And then down here, it printed out friendly cave instead and where I thought it was cave. So let's try this once again. I notice a spelling mistake here, so I'll fix that. So we see we're in the line of caves. We see a cave in front of us. We're going to choose a cave, so now I'll choose cave one. And I've chosen cave one, and I'm generating cave one. So now, as a programmer, we need to decide well, we did. We decided that the friendly cave, um, so my friendly cave matches the cave that I chose. So in this case, I would be able to get the treasure from the dragon. Or maybe the evil dragon lives in one of the caves, and if you um, match the friendly cave, you can pass through to the realm where your character will have adventures and you can add more um, encounters for him and extend this game. Alright, so I'm going to quit for now and I will see you in part two of this tutorial where we will finish up the game for now.